Okay guys, I've talked about it in so many of my videos now, but in today's video I'm going to talk about the Astro modification that I had done to my A7S II. And I'm going to talk about Astro modifying in general, what it means, what it is, how it works, and hopefully answer a bunch of sort of frequently asked questions. Firstly, I'd like you to take a look at this Milky Way image. This is a 360 degree panorama of the Milky Way in its entirety as viewed from Earth. This was taken with a stock DSLR, but then take a look at this image, which was taken with an Astro modified DSLR. And instantly you can see a lot of this red cloud and a lot of stuff that you couldn't quite see in the previous image. And that's exactly what Astro modified is about. It's about collecting more light that's coming from space, particularly something called emission nebula, which I'll get onto in a second. But before I talk about that, we need to look at the properties of light. So light is electromagnetic radiation. And if we look at the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation, we can see that light is sort of defined by the wavelength of the light. And you can see visible light is between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers in wavelength and between those wavelengths we get all of the different colors of the rainbow the colors which the human eye can perceive now of course there are other forms of light which we can't see light outside of the visible spectrum so on either end of the visible spectrum we've got infrared on the one side and uv light on the other side this is light that the human eye cannot see but camera sensors can see UV light and infrared light. They can capture infrared and UV light, but they don't. And they don't because manufacturers put filters in front of the sensor to block that light. They're called UV and IR blocking filters. The reason they do this is to produce an image that replicates what the human eye can see. You know, what we see on a daily day-to-day -day basis, that's what cameras capture, even though they have the ability to detect UV and IR light. But let's go back to the emission nebula, which I briefly talked about at the start of the video. So emission nebula are basically huge, dense clouds of gas and dust, mainly hydrogen. And these dense clouds are very hot. There's lots of fresh young stars there emitting highly energized UV light. And when you think of hydrogen, you have a nucleus and, a, and an electron. An electrons orbit the nucleus in, in quantized energy states. They can only be within these energy states. When the atoms absorb all of this energy from the heat and the UV light, the electrons jump into a higher state. But then eventually as they lose energy, they need to become more stable and the electrons will drop into a lower state. And when they do so, they also emit light. They emit light as photons and they emit light at a very discrete wavelength. The strongest and most abundant form of emission light is called hydrogen alpha or hydrogen one and it has a wavelength of 656 nanometers, which puts it in the visible spectrum. It's a very deep red color. Planetary nebulas might have their strongest emission light in the sort of blue-green area of the visible spectrum, uh, and that's oxygen-3 emission. That's a wavelength of about 501 nanometers. There are also weaker emission lines like hydrogen beta or hydrogen-3, which is again in the blue-green area of the visible spectrum and has a wavelength of about 486 nanometers. But let's focus on hydrogen alpha emission and, you know, that deep red color. It's in the visible spectrum, so why don't stock cameras collect that light? And the reason being is that the human eye is not very sensitive to red light. So in order for a camera to produce images that are more true to the human eye, the filters in front of the sensor actually limit the amount of red light that comes through. So because of this, stock cameras only allow about 15 to 25 percent of the hydrogen alpha emission wavelength of light through your camera and onto the sensor. So the idea behind Astro modifying a camera is to either remove or replace the UV and IR blocking filters in front of the sensor or in some cases you just remove a color correction filter and you basically want to allow more of that hydrogen alpha emission light through and onto your sensor make sense now there are many different mods and it sort of varies between manufacturers and cameras 
Um, but I'm going to split them into two main categories. The first being hydrogen alpha emission nebula sensitivity. The second being something called full spectrum. So full spectrum, you're basically removing the infrared and UV filter. And then you have a camera which collects UV, visible and infrared light. This would be more for deep space astrophotographers. But the thing with a full spectrum camera is that you can put filters either a clip-in filter on top of the sensor or a screw-on filter on top of the lens you are using to create a camera that collects different lights. So for example, you can use a filter which blocks all light apart from infrared and then do infrared photography, which can look really cool. You get dark skies and trees and foliage look like really cool. And Ted Forbes from The Art of Photography actually did a really good video about this recently. He had a full spectrum mod done on his Sony crop sensor camera and he wanted to use it for infrared photography so he was using filters to only allow infrared light through. So I'll link to that video because it's worth watching if you're interested in infrared photography perhaps. But if you want your full spectrum camera to behave like a normal stock camera to use in the daytime, all you have to do is buy a filter that blocks the UV and infrared light. That can be again either a clip-in filter to go onto the sensor um, or a screw-on filter on front of the filter and then your full spectrum camera behaves like a normal camera again. So there's, there's great flexibility there. Now the other type of astro modifying is the type that I have done with my A7S II and it is simply to increase the sensitivity of hydrogen alpha emission nebula. In the case of the A7S II, it was a removal of a white balance correction filter. So I still have a UV and infrared blocking filter there. But because the color correction filter has been removed, my camera now collects more hydrogen alpha emission nebula light. It's a popular modification with cameras like the 6D. I think there's a beta mod which basically replaces the UV IR filter with a another UV IR filter, but that filter allows more of the hydrogen alpha emission through. So again, it's a similar setup to what I have in my A7S II. Now, some people modify themselves. I really wasn't that confident in, you know, risking something that I, you know, invested in so much. So I began contacting companies and all of them, except one, got back to me saying that they, they wouldn't do it because the A7 Mark IIs are so notoriously difficult to astro modify. Apparently there's an infrared light within the camera somewhere which bleeds onto the sensor if you take out that filter. Um, but one company, JTW Astronomy, got back to me and said they could do it. I mentioned the issues and the, the risks and they said, don't worry, your camera will not have any you know, issues. It will not have any infrared bleed onto the sensor. We can guarantee that. Um, so I sent it off to JTW Astronomy. They normally take about two weeks to modify the camera and send it back to you. However, Mark from JTW fell really, really ill uh, and was unable to work for about a week. Um, this left me on edge because I had a trip coming to Turkey and I needed that camera for some commission work. So he, he did the modification quickly and he even offered to pay for next day delivery, which was crazy because they are in the Netherlands and I'm in the UK. So he was offering to pay for next day international delivery from two different countries, which, you know, is not cheap. And he just refused to let me pay for it, but I did in the end PayPal him some money to cover it, but it speaks volumes for their customer service, so worth mentioning. And then yeah, I got my camera back and it was time to test it out and try it. So the results, let's go over the results uh, because I've had this camera for a few months now and initially I just took it to the local coast, which is not that dark and uh, tried photographing Orion because Orion had started to rise during the time and of course Orion is full of hydrogen alpha emission nebula. You've got the, the Horsehead Nebula, the Orion Nebula, you've got the Barnard's Loop uh, and just all this juicy goodness that I couldn't wait to capture with my newly modified camera but unfortunately whilst I did see a better response compared to before it was modified it wasn't popping out, it wasn't quite gleaming 
uh, an instant as I was sort of hoping it would have been. But of course I very quickly learned that because hydrogen alpha emission nebula is rather faint you do need to be in dark skies uh, to capture it. So fast forward a few weeks later we had the uh, Lyrids meteor shower in the Elan Valley and that is a lot darker than the coast I tried and then I really got to see what this camera was capable of uh, and this image here I think the, the base image is a stacking of about six or eight images and you can really see the hydrogen alpha emission nebula in Orion and you can even see the California nebula which is pretty cool just using a wide angle lens you can see the California nebula there and there's just lots of other hydrogen alpha goodness in, in that image as well. I think one of my favourite images so far with the modified camera is this one of the Geminids in La Palma and I'll, I'll link the vlog above as well as the Elan Valley vlog as well. But again just that hydrogen alpha it just adds that little splash of colour and it just looks so good, I love it, I really, really love it. It's just far more true of the night sky and it, it just looks incredible. In a more recent vlog when I was photographing the Milky Way from uh, Snowden, I was getting some nice pink in the North American Nebula, uh, which is found in the Cygnus region of the Milky Way uh, within the constellation Cygnus. And again, it just adds a nice little splash of color to the night sky and it makes once um, I don't want to say boring, but um, an exciting target just looks so much better in, in wide angle sort of landscape astrophotography. And of course, my most recent vlog in, um, on the coast of Wales, where I was photographing the, the Milky Way, again, just getting that extra little splash of pink in the Milky Way core and adding a bit of colour. Um, it just makes it look so much better. I'm so in love with it that I'm contemplating modifying my my A7 III as well because the, the colours you get are just sumptuous. It really just adds so much, at least for me. So let's get on to some of the frequently asked questions in the comments and on the internet in general. The first, uh, the white balance. So when you modify your camera, especially in the form that I have done, your white balance settings will no longer work. You take images and in camera they just look completely pink. Now if you're shooting in RAW, you can take these images into Lightroom or Camera RAW and you can adjust the white balance um, to something that looks a lot more normal. But of course you want to be able to preview your image in the field. So to combat this, I had to buy a grey card from Amazon, I'll post a link in the description. And then on the Sony cameras, you can set three custom white balances by taking a photo of the gray card under different lighting conditions. So I did one during the daytime, I did one under tungsten light, and then I did one under a mixture of tungsten and daylight. And those three settings typically cover me for all situations. And it now means that my images look normal in camera and I can preview them in, in pretty decent colors before I take them home and I don't have these weird images with a completely pink overcast on them. Another thing I've really noticed is that light pollution filters really really help when bringing out hydrogen alpha emission nebula. I haven't been a huge fan of these light pollution filters um, in the past, but with an Astro modified camera, it makes a huge difference. I'll just show you a couple of examples now. So this is a 50 millimeter image of Orion that I took in La Palma, which is a pretty dark place anyway. On the left is a normal image uh, without the, the filter and on the right, is an image that I took with the light pollution filter. And I use the Case Neutral Night Filter. Most of these filters are pretty much the same. They're made of dididium, 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 dididium glass. Um, but I use the, the Case Neutral Night. Um, so the image on the right is the, the Case Neutral Night Filter and the image on the left has no filter. So if we zoom into the Orion Nebula, you can see there's a lot more pink inside the nebula compared to the unfiltered image. Um, and if you look in particular at the Horsehead Nebula, the red just stands out a lot more. And if we look at the Rosette Nebula again, that pink just pops so much more compared to the background sky. 
And I've tried to equalize the white balances here as much as I can. But what I found with um, these, when you're using the light pollution filter is that it completely cuts out the, the yellow sky glow. And normally when you're using an unfiltered image, you compensate for that by just adjusting the white balance. And it kind of looks the same as the filtered image. But when you've got hydrogen alpha emission nebula in the image, it's important to use a more correct white balance. Uh, and you know, using the filter means that you cut out that yellow sky glow, you can use a more correct white balance, and the hydrogen alpha emission nebula color is the color that it should be. Um, when you're compensating for that yellow glow by dropping the white balance, you're changing the color of the hydrogen alpha emission nebula, and it kind of gets lost. So it's a double-edged sword, these light pollution filters. I've never been a huge fan, as I said, but with a, an Astro modified camera, they certainly make a, a significant difference. And I'll show you another image that I took in the, the Brecon Beacons. And I mean, you'll see that the foreground of the filtered image is a lot more blue compared to the unfiltered image. And that's because the filter is removing all of the light pollution on the foreground as well as the sky. And you can see that kind of yellow overcast has been sort of removed with the filter. But if we look at the, the North American Nebula, within the, the Cygnus region. Just look how much it pops out once that sort of yellow mask is removed by the filter. So the filters really help make the hydrogen alpha pop, even in a place like La Palma, which has very little light pollution anyway. So um, that's been definitely one really useful thing that I've learned on this little adventure. Now the Autofocus. My autofocus still works as normal. I think that's because Sony's autofocus works by contrast detection, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me on that. Sometimes when you astro modify a camera, the autofocus stops working. So it's worth checking with uh, whoever's modifying your camera or if you're doing it yourself, just check that the, the autofocus will still work afterwards. Sometimes, for example, if you're removing a filter, you have to replace it with just a simple glass filter um, to make sure that the autofocus still works after the mod. Um, so I can't speak for every type of mod that's out there, but the modification that JTW Astronomy did on my A7S II, the autofocus still works flawlessly. So Now, another thing I noticed is that the noise performance was slightly better. And I first noticed this when videoing. So as you guys know, I use the A7S II to film my vlogs. And I, I noticed that the, the video footage was a little bit cleaner and a little bit brighter. Not a huge amount, but enough to make me notice it. And after speaking to Mark, who did the mod, of course, this is to be expected a little bit because the camera, the sensor is now collecting a little bit more light. Um, so it's not a huge improvement, but it's something that I noticed. So that's pretty much all of the, the good stuff and the frequently asked questions. So is there any bad stuff? And there's only one thing uh, that's worth mentioning, and that is that when the moon is in the frame or there's a bright light source in the frame that's blowing out, you do get a bit of pink color in the glow. So if you take a look at this example here where the moon is in the frame, you can see there's a pink glow uh, around the moon. It's not a huge issue because as long as there's no other sort of red or pink objects in the image, you can just sort of drop the saturation of the red channel and the purple and the magenta uh, and it's pretty much gone. Um, if there are sort of red and pink objects within the frame, I can sort of do that selectively in Photoshop. So it's not a huge issue and I'm, I didn't really modify the camera to photograph the moon. Um, but it's, it's something that obviously I need to mention. There's another example here with a lighthouse. When I was photographing the, the lunar eclipse, you can just see a little bit of pink uh, in the blown out glow of the lighthouse there. So not a huge issue, certainly not a deal breaker. And it's something that's quite easily fixable in post anyway. Now, before I wrap up today's video, there's one other benefit to modifying a camera uh, that's worth mentioning and that is narrowband astrophotography. Now this is more for uh, deep space astrophotography and what it is is basically uh, using a filter to limit 
the light that's coming through onto the sensor to a, a narrow band of, of wavelength. So for example, if you're photographing a primarily hydrogen alpha emission nebula, you can use a filter, either a clipping filter on the sensor or a screw on filter on the front of the lens, which will block all light apart from hydrogen alpha emission light, that 656 nanometer wavelength. So why would you do this? Well, it means that you can photograph hydrogen alpha emission nebula even in heavily light polluted areas or even under the light of a full moon. So these images have kindly been provided by Trevor from Astro Backyard. This is of course the California nebula and this is an RGB image. But then this monochromatic image here is of hydrogen alpha emission light. So he's used a filter to limit only the hydrogen alpha emission light to come onto the sensor. And then he can photograph the California nebula and the moonlight and the light pollution uh, and produce this monochromatic image. Then you can take this hydrogen alpha data and stack it with the RGB data and create a stunning image like this with high detail, beautiful color. And it just extends the capability of your camera, especially if you're stuck in a, a light polluted area or you have clear skies on a moonlit night. Uh, there's something you can do. Trevor did an awesome video on his channel where he shows how he stacked the hydrogen alpha and the RGB image together to create this, this stunning, highly detailed image. And his channel is worth checking out in general. So go over and check that video out or just check his channel out and hit subscribe. I've been following his videos for years now. They are so incredibly inspiring, as you can guess from the name Astro Backyard. He does a lot of astrophotography, quite literally from his backyard and just loads of useful information, loads of awesome videos. So go over and enjoy. And that's about all I think I need to talk about. If you have any further questions, please get in the comments below. I can't answer questions about specific cameras or uh, different types of mods. That's not my specialty. Um, you'll have to do a little bit of research depending on your camera. But if you have any other questions, please feel free to get in the comments below. Maybe somebody else has information that they could answer as well. But, and yeah. Make sure to smash subscribe if you haven't already, guys. I hope you found this video useful. Plenty of other useful videos on my channel as well, so check those out. And there's plenty more to come in the future. So yeah, smash that subscribe button. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.